mission is to rescue a prisoner being held at Lamar Khate Palace. He's known as Malak, angel to his fellow Mujahideen. Start by checking the target's VI on your iDroid. The Soviets captured him and took him to the ruins of the palace. His family was subsequently killed in an airstrike on his village. The Soviets scorched Earth operation wiped it off the map. The client is none other than his father. Or rather, this was his father's dying wish. If you can manage to rescue other prisoners as well, each one will add a bonus to our pay. When you see them, I'm sure your conscience will tell you what to do. Wouldn't they be uncomfortable? And that's why you made sure the inspection happened. Well, I thought our best move was to prove to the UN through the IAEA that we had no nuke. Of course, I was against us having it in the first place, but that was Snake's decision. The boss wasn't responsible. Well, don't get me wrong, I, I still believed in Snake. I thought I was making the best decision for all of us, that's all. I figured we should get a third party to exonerate us before proof of the nuke did get out. And who better to do that than an organization with international authority? <laughs> so the truth is, you took it upon yourself to agree to an inspection arranged by the UN. Cyber Strike Force XOF showed up instead. I had no idea that would happen. Enough bullshit. Oh, sure, like I could have known. You know, I was just trying to prove our innocence to the world. What's wrong with that? We're not interested in the excuses you've thought up. The truth is objective. Just see it from my point of view. You led XOF to the control tower. They seized it, giving them complete control over the base. Moments later, they detonated C-4 on the strut legs. Anyone who'd managed to survive was hunted down by the assault force and their choppers. You can't believe I did that on purpose! That was the end of Mother Base. But it wasn't the end for you. How can you... Look, think about it. I lost something too. I built Zeke and it got buried underwater. I am a victim! That raises the big questions. Why were you the only- And how did you manage to build something that surpasses Zeke in every way? Because you did everything they told you. <laughs> You're the only one who didn't lose a thing. That is the truth. I was taken away against my will. Skullface forced me to do his research these past nine years. He used me. I lost nine years. Nine years. We all lost nine years. It wasn't just you. I suppose blaming me makes you feel better, does it? But who's gonna give me back all the time I lost? You're not getting anything back. <sighs> You're not a victim here, Emmerich. You're the perpetrator. I didn't know anything. Nobody can back that up. Yeah, all the evidence is at the bottom of the ocean. You know the hardest man to break. The type who's fooling himself. That takes time. It's easier to live a convenient lie than a painful truth. Is that the piece you've chosen, Doc? I'm not lying. Of course. Just let me check one or two things. On that day, you were in the control tower with him. Lucky you. That's how you got out unscathed. And you escaped on one of their choppers. Only you, right there. before the... That's the target. They had me blindfolded the whole time. I've never been so scared. The whole flight, I thought they'd kill me. But but thinking of you kept me going. My comrades, all the way. And? There was a plane journey, and then we traveled by road. Kind so of the way. targets to be transported, and the other prisoners disposed of here. What do you think? Our mission is just to extract the one target, but well, there's still time before the target reaches the destination. Skullface. He's the one who's really behind that mother base attack. He forced me into that research. What kind of research? He told me to build a bipedal walking tank for the Soviet Union. Like Peace Walk. A system that could fire an ICBM-class nuclear weapon. 
That's how the Sahelanthropus project got started. We have a fix on the target's location. We just have to figure out how to get close and pull out. Check all around the target and plan carefully before moving in. Turbulence out there. Try not to get knocked out of the sky. Got it. Where does she think she's going? You want to head out with the boss? That'll be the day. I don't see a problem with it, so long as she's with you. She's a crack shot, damn fine scout. Well suited for a clandestine op. Which is more than I can say for the others. There's nothing damn fine about this... thing. Wait a minute, that thing 
cost a lot of money. See each individual blade and a depth perception. One in. This is ridiculous. She doesn't talk. How could you possibly stay in communication? Right. I like working solo anyway. Finda oil field, upstream from the landing point. A spill has covered the whole area and crude. A pipeline that crosses the Muneni River failed, and now the shore's a mess. Not to mention the villages downstream have no drinking water. facility. Taking it out should end the leak. The client this time is an environmental NGO. Destroy the facility. Stop that leak. This may seem like straight-up philanthropy, but there's another reason we agreed to it. The Mafinda oil field was outdated. Abandoned. Then the rebel group Unita moved in, taking it upon themselves to kickstart operations. Unita's been rapidly modernizing its arsenal. Rumor has it someone's been selling them U.S. military hardware. Intel's analysis suggests the broker's a front company, Cyphers. Keeping tabs on United can tell us who's pulling its strings. Resources. Should be a thing or two that'll come in handy. Don't be shy. They deserve to be in better hands. And it's only a matter of time before the aging equipment starts leaking crude. That means United's takeover is the perfect cover for Saner. Now they can blame the spill on a bunch of oil thieves. However you look at it, Saner's far from squeaky clean. That's how the Sahalanthropus project got started. Sahalanthropus. Those AI weapons I'd made in Costa Rica were like toys by comparison. A whole world apart from reptilian four-legged crawling and, and that ridiculous hunched-over bipedal waddling. 
Philanthropus was going to be a manned weapons platform. I designed a cockpit in its head, and I planned to fill it with water as a buffering agent. Like how Puss modified Zeke for human control. Don't compare me to some amateur. I designed it for human control from the beginning. The problem was miniaturizing the posture control AI. You remember the reptile pod? The AI that controlled your unmanned weapons. Attaching it externally makes it vulnerable, so this time I wanted it beneath the armor. Meaning I had to make the AI smaller. I got it down to less than a tenth the size without any loss in computation speed. But it was still too big for the cockpit. There wasn't enough room for the pilot. If I made the head bigger, its body would have to be bigger to support it. Uh, too big to be practical. In the end, human piloting was taken off the table. I tested a remote control system too, but there was the time lag and I wasn't satisfied with its precision either. Plus, it would be useless if the enemy jammed it. So next, I went back to trying an AI-only system. To do that, I had the AI pods recovered from Nicaragua. <sighs> this was a hybrid AI, a combination of Peace Walker's reptile and mammal pods. The only AIs that had ever successfully operated an unmanned nuclear weapon system. Really? You'd need some help to get that working. Expert help. Did you work with someone? I worked alone. But I did finally get Sahelanthropus walking by folding over its upper body to lower its center of gravity. The first upright bipedal locomotive weapon system in the history of mankind. I guess, technically, it falls into the anthropoid ape category. I don't see the benefit of having it stand taller. On terrain with significant differences in elevation, like Afghanistan, you need a body that's vertically adaptable. That also lets it attack from long range while using mountain ridges for cover. So, making it walk upright was the most important factor in giving it superior height capability. As the name suggests, that was the whole point of Sahelanthropus. But I was being pushed for results. Having the AI mounted externally would have been the fastest way to get it working. I just needed more data so it could maintain its balance. But Skullface refused to wait. He dismissed the idea of AI control and took Sahelanthropus away from me before I could finish it. But it was walking when it came after you. That's just it. I don't understand how Skullface got it to move upright. Without a pilot or an AI. And walking at that speed, too. It's beyond anything I could have imagined. This is like the Wright brothers making it to the moon. I I'm just as clueless as you are. So this Soholanthropus, where is it now? I have no idea. All my experiments took place at that cave. I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides, it's still just an incomplete prototype at this point, and nothing but a paper tiger. Even if it can walk, it's far from being a viable weapons platform. It wouldn't be useful in actual battle. Emmerich will remain here at Mother Base for now, but not as a member of Diamond Dogs. I still don't trust him. That work for you? Fine by me. He can't be allowed any contact with staff, either. Yeah. A lot of the guys would love some payback for nine years ago. We still need him alive. But we have to restrict his movements. He can only go where we tell him. And of course, the interrogations will continue. He worked for that skull bastard for nearly a decade. He still has more to tell us. How long are we gonna press him? If our investigation shows he really had nothing to do with the attack, we'll reconsider his place here. But I don't expect that to happen. Remember that water tank-shaped object in Emmerich's lab in the Soviet base camp? The thing that started talking to you like a possessed answering machine. That was a pod belt for housing the AI used to control unmanned weapons. You remember, back in 74 in Costa Rica. It was in those machines you fought there. They were designated Pupa, Chrysalis, Cocoon, and Basilisk. And each of them was fitted with an AI unit called a reptile pod. Emmerich created it. It mainly handled the machine's posture control and autonomous behavior. But the Basilisk, aka Peace Walker, also featured a second AI pod. That one was called the Mammal Pod, and it was created by Dr. Strangelove. 
She tried to recreate the boss's personality through the mammal pod. But you pulled out its memory boards. That's when it transferred its own functions to its reptile pod. Just like a human brain compensating for damage by using the remaining healthy parts. The result was a unique entity. A hybrid of the reptile and the mammal. It sank to the bottom of Lake Nicaragua with Peace Walker. But apparently they salvaged it and transported it to that lab. Don't let it deceive you, Snake. It may sound like the boss, but it has neither a personality nor a will. Like Emmerich says, it's just a machine. Call that thing Sohoanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa, the Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahelanthropus, Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahelanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about oh. 7 million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skull's foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right. Which would mean Sahelanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahelanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, n not at all. Sahelanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahelanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass. That concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahelanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahelanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> Do you know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering, but lately he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? Oh, I think I've heard enough. There it is. The oil facility. To stop the leak, you need to shut down the oil transfer pump and destroy the oily water separator tank. The details are on your iDroid. ...unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. But I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning, and Dr. Clark, I mean. 
Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff. But I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over 10 years ago. And the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher. Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents. If your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <clears throat> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's yep. rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes, encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. W wait a minute. Look, I, I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. <laughs>
were behind what happened. They hired the PF, not United. They restarted the facility all the while pretending they were the victims. One other thing, Sainer's Johannesburg head office is just a room in a multi-tenant building. Company's essentially non-existent. Three years ago, that investment fund stepped in and started gutting it through a series of mergers and sell-offs, and get this, the fund itself no longer exists either. It's a shell corporation, meaning someone is just using Sainer's name from the shadows. But what about those strange corpses? Just what the hell were they 